and welcome to the house of the Lord. It is a good and joyful thing to be gathered together here after an eventful week. And my friends, just let's go ahead. We will, we will talk about it in our joys and concerns, but let us be mindful of how fortunate we are to be together and to um, not have water in this building. We've got, um, many of you have friends, you have people you've heard about, you've seen on the news. Um, I mentioned I was helping and, they, and he was very fortunate. Um, the son of one of my friends got only a couple of inches in his condo in St. Pete, but we were moving furniture and getting things packed up yesterday. And a lot of people got a lot more. And so there will be ways to help. And when we hear and we know what to do, we will let you know um, at this time, be ready. There'll be a um, will be there'll, pro there'll be an advanced special for hurricane relief. Um, but we will be there for one another in the ways that um, are best for each of us to do that. And so we'll watch for that. Um, other announcements, my friends, this morning, um, as we announced last week. We, um, Becky is going to be leaving us, and um, we do now have a, just the short version of a job description, and we put it in there. You might know somebody who might be interested, and we are asking for folks to go through Indeed, because that's how we get all the information, and um, we hope to start having um, preliminary interviews with a, a to vet um, to get a small number of people to um, have the full staff parish interview. We hope to have preliminary interviews set up um, by the end of this week. So we're trying to move quickly on this because we need to do that for Becky. Um, and so that is um, something that is going on. You have already noticed that shoe boxes are here and there will be more. The youth did not meet last week. They will be meeting this week and make more boxes. So if you were thinking, oh, well, there's only two more back there or three if I take the one from the pulpit, um, it's okay, you can. Um, and we'll have more next week. And um, we'll do a video uh, next week about that. And so right now, just know that they're here. They are due November 10th, so plenty of time, but many of you like to get them early and we like to have them available for you. Next week is um, not only World Communion Sunday, so that's the Sunday when we put out all the different breads and everything. And um, some of you said, you know, your first year here, you did a sign-up sheet for breads. And when I did, really? I, I, I was that creative? Great. Um, so if anybody wants to bring a bread from around the world, let the, the, let the church family, let the, the church office know, let Becky know. That would be great. Who was it in choir who mentioned bacon something? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> so, um, and we will have a beautiful, um, to remind us that we are, we are the body of Christ for the world, to the world, and the body of Christ is all over the world. And so we will remember that with World Communion Sunday. And then we get to have our church charge conference. So it's really a church conference. There's two names. There's church conference and charge conference. Charge conference is when it's just for the people who are um, in the discipline as voting members of the charge, um, which is mostly administrative council or church council. But if you have a church conference, which is what this one is, any member can vote. We're not really doing anything extra special or anything. We were just all asked to do it as a church conference this year, and so we went, okay, because everyone who's a member can vote, you, because that is how we are. We have a voice. That's the reason why we have a pastor and a lay leader, because um, we believe in the strength of the laity. And speaking of laity, Laity Sunday is October 20th. So laity is the laos, the people of the church because without us all clergy I mean I can stand up here and blah 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 and that will be lovely and that would be it it takes all of us together yes empowered by the Holy Spirit together but it takes all of us together to do this beautiful work that we are called to and so we're going to celebrate that on the 20th and have our third quarter east angola mission luncheon and guess who's going to be with us 
You want to guess? East Angola? Missions? Yes, so it's else going to be here. So um, it's going to be wonderful. And um, so we're excited about that. If you haven't done your spiritual gift survey, there's more back there. We made more copies. And they're easier to do because we move stuff around and they're easier to do. So if you were in the first wave of them, sorry. I'm sorry. They were hard to do. But we changed it and made it easier. So thank you very much. Those are our announcements right now. And um, at this time, let us continue to prepare our hearts for worship with the bringing in of the Christ candle, and, uh, the light of Christ, and beautiful music. people said amen. amen and now we will watch the uh, ministry moment fifth sunday residing hope children's home video
Um, one of my big requirements I hope is the staff because when I came here, um, some of my skills that I have now, I wasn't really good at them. And like, I'm not very good at conversation skills or reading skills. So like when I came here, they helped me go through it. Um, my dreams and hopes when I leave this place is to be a real estate agent. Because now that I was here, I have like good communication skills. And I think that to be a real estate agent, you need those skills. And I always wanted to be one. join me in our opening prayer <clears throat> gracious and loving God we come before you today acknowledging your boundless love that sustains us as we gather to worship we ask that your love fill our hearts uniting us as one body in Christ help us to love you as you have loved us selflessly deeply and without condition let your love guide our every word and action in this time together May we encounter your presence and be transformed by your grace so that we leave this place reflecting your love to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you will please stand for our call to worship and our opening praise song. Jesus, shed thine all-victorious love in our hearts abroad. Then shall we no longer rove, but be rooted, fixed in God. Grant us faith and your spirit's fire to illuminate our souls, that love and word and deed will from our lives like rivers flow. May the height and depth and width and length of your love be known through our lives that our faith in you will be ever shown. One who can do what the world says can't be done. I know my God can do it. I'm gonna worship through it. I won't wait till the rocks cry. I'm gonna praise you. I won't wait till the walls come down. I'm gonna praise you. Gonna lift my hands right here, right now. I'm gonna praise you. Oh God, I praise you.
please be seated. Sorry, I'm trying to decide. All right, Mason. Hey, that's good stuff. That's a whole bunch of cute. Hey, sweetie. Okay, we're going to keep this short and sweet. Kind of like you. So, so, you might need to help, okay? Yeah. So, I have a question. Who loves you? <gasps> Who? Who? <laughs> Does that... <gasps> Just walk straight on up. Just walk straight on up. Perfect timing. Yeah. Hey, look, it's your pal Neil. Yeah. Hi. We're talking about who loves us. So who loves us? Do you know who loves us? God loves us. Do you know who else loves us? Jesus loves us. And you know who helps us to love God and have Jesus in our hearts and be strong and love others? The Holy Spirit? Yeah. And so those, that's always God's with us. So many ways. Yeah, I know there's nothing to shake today. I'm sorry. I'm boring. <laughs> but we're all going to say thank you for God's love for us and the strength of the Holy Spirit to love others that's all through Christ and our faith in Christ. You ready? You ready? Here we go. All right. Dear God, thank you so much for loving me and always being with me. Thank you for Jesus who shows me and all of us what it means to be rooted and established in your love and grace. Your love and grace. Thank, you for your Holy Spirit, Thank you for your Holy Spirit, who helps me love others, me love others and, live out and live out the love of Christ, love of Christ in, my heart in my heart and life. And, life. and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. And now you're invited to stand as you feel called and are able for the affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. And then we'll sing the Gloria Patri afterwards. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Please be seated.
all God's people said, amen. Ah, oh, my friends, let us join together now in a prayer of thanksgiving over the gifts, tithes, and offerings. Dear God, on this weekend, that is right after a storm came through and we got some wind, we got some branches down, we might have lost power for a minute or two, maybe a little longer. We thank you that as far as we know, everybody is, is okay. But dear God, that is not the case everywhere and even as we talk about this storm, there are other storms. There are real physical storms and there are emotional storms and there are metaphorical storms of all sorts. And you call us into the storm. You call us to love and to be there for one another. And so dear God, we ask that you bless these gifts and tithes and offerings the gifts that we give to residing hope so that the children who have been through the storms of life will find shelter and safety and refuge to the gifts that we will be giving towards hurricane relief for those who just need a little help for those who or maybe a lot dear god and to those who in all the other ways that our gifts are at work, our tithes are at work, our offerings are at work, for your will to be done, we ask for blessings upon them and to all who come in contact with them so that they will know that they are loved and that they, they are cared for. And dear God, it is not about us showing our love for them. It is not about us. It is about us living out your love for them. And yes, it feels lovely to do that. But more than that, it is what it means to be created by you for love and relationship with you and all creation. So bless these gifts, bless those who receive them, bless us who have given them so that in all ways we might all be closer to you through your son, Jesus Christ, and then just keep on loving and caring so that your love, your will, your will and kingdom will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. You stand as you feel called to one. And yes, friends, we've already started in our joys and concerns because there's, there's a bit. And um, another concern, you'll notice that um, Shirley and the Woods are not here. Greg is in the hospital. Um, he is, they're figuring out what is going on, but he needs our prayers. And that means Kathy needs our prayers, and I'm sure Shirley is, is helping out. And so please keep them in prayer. When we know ways that we can be helpful, we'll let you know if, if there are ways for us to be helpful. Um, but they're waiting to find out what's going on. So they hope to have some answers soon. So we do need to keep them in prayer. What are the other joys and concerns? Obviously, everyone who has been impacted by Helene um, any others? 
Yes, Ms. Pat. Okay. So, both, both, both the boys. Okay. Po both of the barber boys um, are. So we'll be um, we'll be keeping them in prayer. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So prayers for your traveling mercies, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. So they're going on a cruise, but uh, it's a river cruise. But but also it's um, because now things are a little different. There's a lot of mudslides. Um, so yes, and. Um, uh, Prayers for Pastor Doug. He will leave out tomorrow. He's over in St. Pete now, and um, he will be uh, leaving out tomorrow to head actually up to Atlanta and then over. And we've all said, check your GPS. Check and see what roads are open because as many of you have seen in the news, there's a lot of roads that aren't open right now. So, um, so traveling mercies for him. And for all those who are traveling, we've, we've got already, you know, there's line workers from all over, going all over to help out. And um, so we're thankful for that. And any others right now? I'm gonna make a plug during Joy's Concerns. Um, we now have one, two, three, four, five, we have five and a half people helping with youth. If you were thinking, I could give one Thursday afternoon to those crazy kids, talk to me. You can sign up in the back or you can talk to me. We're, if we could have one more person, it would be really helpful. We're getting there, but it would be really helpful to have one more person. So just throwing that out there um, because our youth will start up there regular now. Um, we met twice during September, but had to take a couple weeks off. And so we'll be starting up and meeting regularly now. And so we're excited about that. Um, so that's a joy. And um, otherwise, any other joys that we want or, or concerns? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for all the ways that you love us and are with us. And we thank you for the ways that you are with people, even if they don't know it, because you're with all of us. And we thank you for the ways that your Holy Spirit, through your provenient grace, that love, your love that comes before we're even aware of it, it's at work loving us, caring for us, giving a sense of comfort and peace, and wooing us towards a dawning understanding of your great love for us in Christ so that we will be open to that love. We are thankful for your love in Christ, for the way that you came to be with us through Jesus so that we could see what fully loving, reconciled life with you looks like and be given an opportunity to be reconciled to made be made new at one with you we thank you for that and we thank you for the lived out life in Christ that we have empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we know as the praise song said earlier that nothing is impossible and that we can praise you even as things are in the works that we cannot see. We thank you. We thank you for loving us, and we thank you for being with us even when things do not go the way we want them to. Because this world, oh, dear God, you've given us free will, and sometimes we abuse that, and also sometimes things that we don't understand that are hard and difficult and even horrible happen. And yet you do not abandon us. You love us. And you call upon us 
to love one another. In fact, you command us to love one another and be there for one another. That includes the, the stranger, the people who right now are digging out and being flooded. It means we respond to opportunities to be there for one another because because you empower us, you give us the power to do it. That's a lot to say thank you for, dear God. And so we do, and we praise you, and we sing hallelujah. Even as we lift up all of those who we are thinking about right now, some names and situations that we've said out loud, but dear God, there's more. There's situations all around the world that we've heard about. There's, there's wars and rumors of wars. And there's droughts and there's floods. And dear God, you call on us and empower us to love in this time and this place. Show us. Show us as we ask for your Holy Spirit to be poured out upon us and all your children in healing, in wholeness of mind, body, and spirit to give us whatever it is we need to do your will. Strengthen us. Empower us as we pray together the prayer that your son our savior taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, we get to sing Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. This one, okay, you stand as you feel called and are able. And this, I got to play the part of Charles Wesley. Um, yeah, I know. You're like, really? And got to sing this song when I was like 10 years old at church. You can go ahead and stand up. And, and this is a great song. And this is one that is, it, this is, this is who we are as Christians. So please stand as you are called and are able. <laughs>
standing as you feel called and led and let us pass the peace of Christ. to slow down towards the end to try to, you know, also help us. But do you know this? This is what it means to be the body of Christ. What we do out there, also how we are fed in here so that we can go and feed out there. And so this is our first week in a new series called Wesleyan Rooted. And... There will be nothing in here that, I hope there's nothing that I will be talking about that's going to be a surprise to anybody. Um, because this is who we are. This is what it means to be Christian. We have a little special language that we use sometimes. But um, Wesley, uh, John Wesley, once said they were, you know, Methodist. Okay, I got to do some preamble stuff. Um, so, you know, you know the story of Methodism, like how we became to be? Was it was reform of the, of the Church of England. They were kind of um, mm, uptight. And, and it, the Industrial Revolution was happening. And people were coming in off the land, and they were working now in factories or in the coal mines. And life had become very different for a lot of the people. And so if you were a part of the merchant or higher classes, everything was good. And you, you still had your, you know, you had your money and your, and your land. And, and so that's a lot of people, that's where they were, that were in the church. But there were all these other people that maybe had been going to churches, but now they were, they were somewhere else. And life was really hard. It was really difficult. Um, they weren't rising with the sun and going to bed with the sun anymore the same way. And um, there was this stuff called gin. It was easy to make, and it took the edge off. It also took the edge off for children. I describe it as, some people have said, eh, Missy, I think you're overstating it, but I, the meth of its day, the, the opioid, the whatever we are, the, the meth, meth, whatever the, our opioid, opioid is, whatever it is that we use to, to, to calm us down and help us to escape. It was the escape, and it was what people could do, and it got bad. But also, people were just kind of miserable, but also, they were not feeling welcome in the churches, 
And there was a lot of poverty, and there was a lot of sickness, and there was a lot of um, just uh, unhappiness. Does this sound like anything we know? And John and uh, Charles, his brother, and some of their friends, they're at Oxford. Oxford. And they want to have a closer relationship with God. And so they're like becoming priests in the Church of England and stuff like that. But they want to have a closer relationship with God. And so they start doing this stuff like getting up really early in the morning. Bless their hearts. Um, natural, natural morning people, good for them. Um, and they would, Wesley would be like, he had this journal that they just recently, like in our lifetimes, they finally, he was born in like 1703, okay? In our lifetimes, they finally figured out the code because he wrote in a shorthand, so they didn't know everything he was saying. He kept track of everything he did. So what time he got up, how long he prayed, how long he read the Bible, who he went to visit, which debtor's prison he went to, which infirmary he went to, all these different things. And it was all very laid out. And when he worked with other people, he was like, and you want to be closer to God. Do, these are the things you need to do to help you grow in your relationship with God. And it was very methodical. Get it? Did he and, and the others who were trying to actually reform the Church of England so that people would feel more welcome and also have a closer relationship with God were called Methodist. They were also called Bible moths because they were always fluttering around Bibles. We could have been... Uh, I was reading another pastor's, um, Magreda Vega. Um, he said, we could have been called the Methodists. Yeah. That wouldn't be confusing at all. Um, so the thing is, all we are is people who want to share the love of Christ. And so Wesley was saying, you know, we're, we've got to, this, this is who we are. We're a people of love. The love of God, the love of Christ is supposed to be in our hearts and then shed abroad. That was actually some of the words to our, the, the hymn that we based our call to worship upon. He talks about the, the image of Christ. Instead of the image of God, he actually also talks about the image of Christ stamped new upon our hearts every day. And it's so that we can be closer to God. That's why Jesus came. That's what salvation is, is reconciliation with God, to be at one with God, not just now, but forever. That's what it is. And that's grace. The love of God that goes before we are aware, the love of God that justifies us to God, makes us back in line with God, and the sanctifying love of God that helps us through the Holy Spirit to grow closer to God and each other. That's who we are. And that's what the Methodists were trying to do. By preaching... And there's a story behind that. Outside to the factory workers or on a factory floor if they could get in past the, um, the foreman and stuff like that. To preach to the people and let them know that they're loved and there's another way. There's a new life that is right there waiting for them. Outside in the fields near where the, where the coal miners were, by the, in the highways and byways, wherever they had to go to share the love of Christ. So they also, they were in the infirmaries, they, they visited debtors' prisons. They did these things, and other people thought they were crazy. Methodists. And all that meant was that the Christians with a plan. So hear these words from Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. This is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being 
so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established or rooted and grounded in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. There's a lot there. We're going to read it again. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, out of God's glorious riches, you will be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. That you will be strengthened in his spirit with power in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Did you know that in our spiritual gift survey, by the way, read that article in the newsletter. We've got paper copies and the, um, um, the other copies, digital copies are coming out tomorrow probably. The three gifts, I think I said this before, that everybody has one of them in this church so far that has turned in one. And don't worry if you turn it in, it's not. It's just number seven, it's fine. Faith, healing, miracles. And the reason why healing and miracles is showing up so often is because of the faith of the faith of you all. Because you see God at work. This is Christ in hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people. You see, we're not in it alone. You have power, and together we have power. This is the body. So that we can grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. How, how wide, how long, how, how deep, how, which word did I forget? so much that it surpasses our understanding. And to know that this love, that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. And dear God, like changing ever changing so that we are ever growing closer to you may it be like changing for us O oh lord our god our rock and our redeemer and all god's people said Amen. okay who wants this who wants this who wants to be filled to the measure of the fullness of god anyone Anyone want to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge? Because knowledge will pass away, my friends. But not the love of God. Not the love of Christ. Who wants, to, wants Christ to dwell in your heart through faith? Anyone? Not always perfect at it. Might have been a little stressed recently. Who wants to be empowered? I want to be empowered. What do you think these things look like? What does it look like to be filled to the measure of the fullness of God? What does it look like to know the love of Christ? It passes knowledge. I mean, it passes everything. It's a, it's, a, it's a bone deep. It's a life deep, soul deep knowledge. What does it mean to have Christ dwelling in our hearts? What does it mean to be empowered by God? Oh, look, I brought out the stool. What does it mean? 
What do you think it means? Real question. Be filled with the Spirit. Okay, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to you to be filled with the Spirit? The fullness of God, to be empowered by Christ, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to you in your life? People can see Christ in you. Okay, now get ready for the next question. Do you know the next question? It's, what does that look like? Say what? Being kind and loving to people. What does that look like? Unconditional. What does that look like? Oh, oh, ow. Not just love, not just some people, but all people. Yeah. Does that mean we agree with them? No. It means we love them. And it means that you, let, you can let them know if you're worried about stuff, but then at some point, you have to stop. You can still love them and you can let them know, but if you keep on, then they'll shut you down. They'll shut you out of their life. There's no script to this right now. These are questions that if we really want to be rooted in love and the faith of Christ, through Christ and faith, that this is what we're going after. We're going after the hard stuff of loving people unconditionally. We're going after what else does it mean to be filled with the fullness of God or to be empowered by Christ? What, what does it mean for you? And it, by the way, there's no right answer for this. There might be, I mean, at some point if you go, and that means I can kick puppies. No, no, no. There's, there might be a wrong answer or two, but there's no like, oh, definitive right answer to this because God works with all of us in different ways. Yes, ma'am. Being full of joy, fruit of the spirit, joy. I think that um, it, we, we have to, it, and, and, it's, and it's hard sometimes. There's times where it's just hard to be joyful. But joy is not happiness. It's a, it's a different thing. And to find that way to, to allow that joy to bubble up, and it can be hard. What else? Okay, re- repeat that one. Knowing, oh, 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 nice one. Knowing true love. Yeah, y'all just, you just get it up here because I've got that AC behind me. And um, also, they say I don't have a hearing problem. <laughs> um, so knowing what true love is, that's good. And that has to do with that knowledge of, of Christ, yes, that passes all understanding. So of the love of Christ, yeah. So what does that look like? What does true love in Christ look like? Oh, flip it. I'm sorry. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, because we are. Seeing needs. Yeah. Which it's hard sometimes because God will show us needs and people will tell us wants. And finding the space where we can do what God is calling us to do in a way that can meet the needs and um, but we may not be doing everything that the person says they want. That's, that happens around here a lot with some of our folks that come through and come by, and we we try to send them to the Bartow Community Center and to other things um, to help them. We can do some things, but there's other things that we're not as well equipped for. And some people want, also, some people want the fast answer, and sometimes it's a slow process. And so, to get to that place of to be able to more fully understand that true love that God has for us, which is really hard to accept sometimes because I don't know about you, but I know this, there's a mess. <laughs> this is a mess. I love God. I love others. Sometimes I do not show either one very well. 
And sometimes I don't show love of myself very well. And so we need help. And so we ask God for help, and God gives it. So that we can be rooted and grounded, established in love. And what are those ways? Now, this one, this is what takes us back to our Wesleyan roots here. There's a, there's a generic name for it, and it's spiritual disciplines. But our special way of saying it is means of grace. That we practice these things not as a checklist, not as a way of saying, well, if I, <clears throat> if I pray at 4.30 in the morning, he got up before that, okay? I think it was like at 4 at 3.30, the man was a little, little um, But if you're a morning person, that works for you. Um, when I wake up at 3.30 in, in the night, I will pray, but then I try to go back to sleep. But it's not a check mark. But prayer is so important, right? What else is important? What helps us be rooted in love? Rooted in love. To know the Bible. And we are going to talk about that even more next week because we are rooted in Scripture. That is who we are. We, uh, Wesley says we are a, uh, a people of one book. Right? That's all we need. All that is necessary for salvation is found in the Bible. What else? Surrender. But how, okay, so, so that's great. How do we get to surrender? What helps us get there? It can be. It can be the hard times. So what helps us in the hard times? And I'm not trying to be pushy. I'm saying because I think this is part of this conversation. I think you're absolutely right. What's, so the trust, the prayer, ooh. Say that again, Faye. Faith, okay. So I have a question. Look around, or not, no, this is demand, I guess. Look around you. Look around. All right. These people in the hard times, who here, and if, and if you haven't yet, either that means you haven't had a hard time yet, or we have fallen down on our job. Who here has gotten a telephone call, or a card, or a hug, or a meal? Raise your hands. Who here has been told that you were being prayed for? See? This too is what helps us, because we're there for one another. This is also, this is also fellowship. Christian fellowship is also a means of grace. It is Christian fellowship. Who here has felt empowered by the Holy Spirit to do something? Ever, ever. I've seen some of the things some of y'all have done. If you were doing that on your own steam, bless you, and we all need to get out of the way when you let the Holy Spirit start working because it's going to be amazing. But I would say that whether we're aware of it or not, the Spirit is with us and working in and through us. So we are on this journey where we have accepted Christ into our hearts and then we're living this out that's what Paul is talking about he's talking about living it out after being rooted that rooted in love that that established in love grounded in love and the roots that grow deep that is the love was always there sometimes we call that prevenient grace and then when we accept Christ, we talk about justifying grace. We've been justified. We've been made right with God. It's like when you remember typewriters and justifying the lines, right? Yeah. 
Okay, for some of you, that one thing on the computer where the two make, you know, you can do it from the right or from the left or you center it, or it's all on the sides exactly the same, it's justification. It's being oriented on God is another way of saying it. And when we accept Christ into our hearts, we reorient on God, on God. But the journey is not over at that point. That's also something that is very um, indicative of who we are as Christians, is that we understand that we've got this life together in Christ, individually and together. We, we have this cross-shaped life. And those means of grace help us to live this life so that we are empowered, so that we are and I talk about empowering a lot because it just feels like, you know, a lot of times we're just low energy and we need the power. But all of this is possible because we've been given these beautiful, beautiful tools by God. And it's not just the prayer and the Bible and the worship and the fasting, by the way, yeah, means of grace tithing means of grace it is the those are acts of piety it's acts of mercy so Bartow Church Service Center making meals for somebody going out of your way to call somebody check in visit with somebody me these are means of grace this is how we are the body of Christ together and it helps us, all of this, helps us to be more rooted and established in the love that is what has, is our foundation. The Christ, the solid rock we stand on, is a rock of love, the love of God that created us. And so, this is what we get excited about. This is what we, we sing about this love divine, our love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fix in us this thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercy's crown. This is who we are. People filled with the love of God, empowered by Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit to do impossible things because we are grounded and rooted in something beyond ourselves. The author of creation. I would like you to think about something. I'm actually going to get us out yeah, close to on time. But I'd like you to think about something this week those things that we do, because all they are are tools that God has given us. They're beautiful, fantastic tools, but they are only, tools are only, I mean, I can take a wrench and try to nail in a, um, a nail. I mean, I might get the job done, but it's not gonna be that good a job. And I can, I can nail in stuff all day long, but if I'm not trying to work towards something, I just put some nails in something. These tools are for a purpose, and it is to grow us in our relationship with God and Christ and one another. So, please think this week about this. Think about one of the things, okay? This is your first part, part one. All right, I'm going to name off a couple. There's more, but I'm going to name off like the low-hanging fruit of the uh, means of grace. Okay, ready? Here we go. Prayer, Bible reading or study, worship, like, and including singing and songs, and um, Christian fellowship, and um, fasting and tithing, and then, oh, sacraments. We'll be doing that next week. Um, and then we, we've got, um, so acts of piety, that, that would be things like visiting people, calling people, checking on people, hospital visits, prison visits, welcoming the stranger, 
Those are some of the acts of piety. Okay, think about those, all right? Think about one that is one that you have done. You got it? How did it affect your faith? I want you to think about that. And here's your challenge, if you would be willing to. Email the church, call the church office, leave a message. Text me if you've got my number. Email me if you've got my email. Get the information to the church. Say, this is what I did. This is how it affected me, my faith. I know I love you all dearly. I know you're not all going to do it. But if some of you would, and don't think it's going to be the person next to you. If you are feeling the Holy Spirit say, ooh, this, you need to do this, then that means you feel like I'm a pledge drive. Do it if you feel called to, to actually let us know. But whether or not you let us know or not, think about it. How has worship affected your faith? How has prayer affected your faith? How has um, reading the Bible affected your faith? And just pick one, one example, one time. How has visiting with people affected your faith? How has whatever it is for you? And there's multiples. There are means of grace. There's a bunch of them, and they work in different ways and we in different points in time in our lives. But think about it. Because God has given us this gorgeous gift, and sometimes we, we um, just allow it to wash over us and don't identify it. And so, like Paul, I think we can all pray that we will be filled to the measure, filled to the measure of the fullness of God, rooted in love and the grace of Christ. And all God's people said, amen. As the praise band is coming forward, let us pray. Dear God, you love us so much. And we love you. We don't always understand how and why you love us so much and why you don't give up on us. But, oh, we are thankful that you don't. We are thankful that you continue to seek after us and love us and and fill us. And you gift us with gifts of, through your spirit and with tools, the means of grace to grow closer to you and to better love each other as you call us to do. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. We thank you because you came to be with us in Christ. And through Christ, All things are possible, including this new life that we live in you. We thank you and we praise you. And in the name of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, all your people say, amen. You are invited to stand as you feel called and are led for our final praise song. Dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save.
save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your rejections. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated now we So love, God so love the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and Save us, whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved. words of benediction. Go in peace in the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing that you are empowered, knowing that you are loved, knowing that together with God, all things are possible in Christ. And all God's people said, amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And all God's people said, Amen.